I might. I might. Welcome back, Strike Team. Welcome to another episode of Strike Team Official. I am here in Concord, California at Myers Martial Arts with Jeffrey Myers, third degree black belt in Shonru, as well as my instructor in Shonru Karate. Um, he has a really interesting story about how he found practical karate. And it is one of the reasons where with me training multiple systems, like I've told you guys, I do Muay Thai, I do Weishu do Karate, I do uh, a little bit of Jiu-Jitsu boxing, why I found it important to find time to train with this guy because he's very knowledgeable in the practical applications of kata and just the story of what he went through to find that was really inspiring to me. So hand it over and tell your story. All right, thanks for having me. So uh, my story started off uh, as a kid. I did a little bit of karate here and there, like I think most kids. And then I got to college and decided that uh, I wanted to make sure I got a black belt. And so um, one of my friends was the teacher and he taught us in the classrooms at the college and uh, I was able to make it all the way to black belts. We didn't really do a whole lot of sparring. Um, we didn't do a whole lot of uh, applications for the kata, um, but I, I still looked up to him and respected him and thought that the stuff that he did was pretty legit. Um, he trained under a 10th Don, which I thought was really cool. At that time, my understanding of 10th Don or Grandmaster was that uh, there was only one, and I didn't realize the only one was per association or per group. Um, I thought it was like one in the world or something like that. And so I had this big impression that, that you know, I was definitely in the right place. Um, and then as time went on, um, took a little break from training after college, came back, started helping out teaching at their dojo where uh, my teacher's teacher was and uh, did that for a couple years before deciding to start out on my own. And just about the time I decided to start out on my own, I was still uh, managing restaurants and uh, this gentleman who was one of the busboys at the restaurant told me that his uh, mom and stepdad had owned this Kyokushin school and said that I should come check it out. So then I went over there and started getting my butt kicked by uh, white belts and blue belts. At this time, mind you, I was a second degree black belt and realized that this was something else that I probably needed to be a part of and figure out how to actually do the whole taking care of myself and defending myself element of karate that goes along with any sort of martial art that has a self-defense component, which I think most of them are supposed to. And um, so I decided to start training in that. And through my journey of training in Kyokushin, uh, a friend posted a video of me on uh, Facebook, I believe, of having a green belt and taking a test in Kyokushin. And that got back to uh, this 10th degree grandmaster who decided that I should no longer wear a green belt or no longer be a part of his system anymore. And so he decided to go ahead and ask me to not be a part of his system anymore. Um, which was very devastating at the time. I lost friends. People were told that if they trained with me, um, they would also be removed from the system. And people that I had known for 14 years, uh, people that I had known since I was 18 years old, and at that time I was in my early 30s, and uh, people that had been in my wedding, and just things that I had experienced a lot of people, uh, a lot of experiences with these people. So um, I decided that I was gonna keep continuing on. I taught what I knew. Um, I kept the kata the same. I kept the, I started incorporating actually the sparring from my Kyokushin training and I had actually done that even before that. Um, but it was basically based on ego and jealousy and uh, not wanting me to train in something. Uh, originally when I had decided to start the training in Kyokushin I had asked for permission which my instructor had given me and then later um, about five years in decided that he no longer wanted me to do that when he saw this video online. So that went on for a little while and then um, I just started having the no like, knowledge from looking at more videos online and um, other experiences of just wanting to make corrections to my kata and not having a resource, a place that I could ask because this person had created their own style um, supposedly from uh, an instructor who I can't find any evidence that ever existed. And so uh, the applications I was finding online weren't lining up with my kata and they weren't lining up because the kata were, had been altered for more show purposes and didn't really have a lot of practical application that went with those moves. So um, it threw me into this massive depression and um, it was really hard. I had a lot of anxiety. Uh, I had a big group of students. I had my own dojo at that point for um, over five years and I had developed this big group of people and I knew that um, I was good with the people, um, I was a good teacher, I had good relationships with these people, um, but that the product I was serving them was not a real quality product and that the moves actually didn't work and a lot of the teachings that I had been taught didn't actually make sense. So I went on this quest um, to find better martial arts and after about a year of searching and panicking and not sure if I was gonna shut down my school or what I should do because I felt like a fraud, 
I found the video of Karate Culture on YouTube, and um, and I had known Michael from many years previously, and it gave me the courage to reach out and talk to him because I had been made to believe by my previous instructor that no one else would train with me and no one else would touch me, and I was somehow tainted and um, you know I wasn't worthy of learning from other people. And so he said he had a long talk with him, and he had um, had not a similar experience, but. Um, a couple things along the same lines and so he referred me to Ian Abernathy and also to um, to Noah and Richard Pogue uh, who ended up becoming my sensei of Waza Wednesday um, and so their videos are still up on YouTube and very good and so I had uh, Sensei Pogue and uh, Sensei Noah out to my dojo and I decided that Sensei Pogue would be my new sensei and that was going to be in Kobayashi Shonru and I liked his practical approach to things, um, the way that he, his movements always made sense, and his explanations, he could back them up with practical uh, techniques that, you know, even if I was resisting, they actually worked. And so that was kind of the start for me. So I started going to ses uh, seminars with Ian Abernathy, um, and also flying out to Arizona. Uh, I went out there several times and was able to train with my sensei and have him come out to, to California to train with me. And I slowly started putting together my own philosophy of how things worked um, and so that's kind of how it all got started and then after two years of being in and finding this incredible sensei uh, you know who was younger than me and had way more knowledge than you know than I could hope to have he ended up passing away tragically of a brain tumor um, he got actually rushed to the hospital I was with him and I believe I was the last person he trained at the Ian Abernathy seminar in San Diego and they were driving back to Arizona and he got airlifted back to UC San Diego um, to have surgery for this massive brain tumor that they had discovered and um, he ended up passing away a little bit later And so then I've been keeping in contact with uh, his other students and I am now directly under his sensei who is uh, Kiyoshi Eddie Bethay. He's an eighth-degree black belt who's located in Kokomo, Indiana He's been training in the style that I'm a part of since 1966 and I continue to train under him and also to um, to be creative and learn from lots of people and to do the one of the things that made Sensei Pogue so special was that he had his main style and he was very loyal to Sensei Bethe, to Kiyoshi Bethe, um, but he he searched outside and he wasn't scared to look outside the box and try other things and learn from other people. And so um, while I'll never try to be, be him, I'm trying to do what he did and like seek what he sought. And so I'm learning from a lot of different people, um, different styles of jujitsu and also karate, striking, Muay Thai. I'm actually working with Leo on my striking once a week, um, which is very nice that we're able to have that relationship where I can work with him in his karate, he can help me with my striking. Um, and so that's pretty much how I got to be where I am now. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I, like I was saying, like the fact that you went from training in a martial art, when we talk about all the, in my first video ever, I, the intro video to this YouTube channel, I talked about some things I personally was not a fan of in the martial arts. And and one thing I believe I mentioned, I hope I did, was just when an instructor doesn't like you training with another group, usually that's, I often consider that a bad sign. Um, and you went from one of those situations where you were hitting all the really scary parts that people say like, beware of this in karate. Like these are the the bad signs mm -hmm. that you're, yeah. this is not where you need to be. Like your instructor doesn't want you training with other people or mm -hmm. they, um, when you start going out and training and finding new applications, things they're not, mm -hmm. they're not receptive mm -hmm. to like, oh, well this works too. Everything's mm -hmm. so in a box. Mm -hmm. And then you find instructors who are open and very knowledgeable, um, applying everything practically with resistance, making sure it really works. And now you're, you know, out here having your own school, doing it a way where you can feel proud to do what you're doing. And I also like, as you're talking about, as he said the words, seek what they sought, which is like, I noticed a lot of martial arts are talking about that. When you look at the, like, the Genshin Funakoshis and like, all the, all the old martial art masters, a lot of them cross-trained. Mm -hmm. A lot of them did multiple martial arts um, to improve their actual karate. Um, we were just talking about earlier how so much karate actually is connected to like judo and jujitsu and stuff like that. And now you're out here doing that. Like I know you say you, don't you also do some jujitsu too? Yeah, 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 I'm also training in jujitsu. Yeah, I train over at 10th Planet in Walnut Creek and um, under Alex Kanders. He's very good and knowledgeable and you know international champion and also train striking with him as well. Um, yeah, and that's really what it's all about. If you get stuck in a box and you can't step outside that box, then it's, you know, it's usually based on fear or people not wanting you to find out 
uh, that you don't know everything. And in reality, I, I don't know everything and neither does anyone else that I know um, or that I've ever trained under, frankly. And so to go seek out things from other people is a huge thing. You know, you don't wanna copy someone else and things will work differently for you than they will for other people based on your body. Um, you know, are you tall, are you short, are you bigger, are you smaller? And especially with karate, a lot of people try to fit applications to every situation. Well, it's not gonna work in every situation and it's not gonna work for every person. Um, one of the things that I teach in my kids program is that um, a lot of the techniques they work right now, for example, if they're a second grader, might work on someone if that was maybe in fourth grade, but it's not gonna work on a full grown adult. But I still see the value in teaching them because they're gonna grow up and be big people and full size adults. And if they have that knowledge already when they get there, then they're gonna be able to apply it. And so just not having students with a false sense of security that they um, actually can defend themselves against you know, someone that they actually can't. And one of the biggest lessons I learned when I switched over my style, also to go back to that just a little bit, was um, I was afraid what the parents were gonna think when I said I'm changing everything. Um, and I'm changing the, all the forms and the way that we do things. And we used to wear black uniforms and now we wear white uniforms. And the lesson I learned from two of the parents in particular was that um, they said, you just taught our children the biggest lesson that you could have ever taught them, that adults make mistakes and then they have to make up for it and they have to fix it. And especially, you know, right now, with everything going on in the world, that's a big thing, you know, to be like, yep, I did that and uh, we're not gonna do it again. And I've learned and we're gonna do better. So I see that as something very yeah, important. That is, when I said it was, just, that's the most inspiring part of the whole thing. It's like you, you admitted it, fixed it and made it through, which, that just sounds tough in my head just thinking about what that must have been like to go through so yeah it was a big challenge you know we ended up losing some students that had a difficult time with the changes but they all understood um and it was really just that uh, i knew that it was either shut it down or do something that i believe in and i couldn't continue teaching something that i didn't believe in anymore all right well yeah that's that's yeah that's that's a great story that's a great that's a great history and obviously a lot of adversity, adversity that you had to go through. So yeah, I guess we're gonna move on to the next part and go over some kata and some bunkai techniques and go from there. Absolutely. All right. Hey, what's up guys? Um, I totally forgot, my bad. Like, subscribe, turn on your notifications, follow me on Instagram on my personal page and on the page for Strike Team Official so you can stay up to date with what we're doing, when we post and what's coming out next. All right, thank you.